Hey everyone, I'm Chef Tom and welcome to my workbench. I'm a retro computer enthusiast. I'm far from an expert in any of this stuff, but I really enjoy it. And today I'm going to start prototyping our Commodore 128 MX keyboard. So when I got my Commodore 128 about a year ago, uh, it had a couple of broken keys and I have just had the worst luck in trying to source new keys. They also have broken plungers and everything else. So I decided then I wanted to design a whole new keyboard for it, which would also be useful because then we could have a whole new keyboard that fits the 128D as well. And since the keyboards can go for like 400 bucks when the computers can go for like 100 bucks if they don't have a keyboard, I thought that was a great idea and a way for me to get a 128D, which I'd love to have in my collection a little bit easier. Uh, when I thought of the idea at first, and this was, like I said, a, a long time ago, like nine months ago, uh, I'd put on Twitter, uh, what kind of switches should I do? Should I go for nice quiet ones like the original? And overwhelmingly, the Twitter response was clicky. So I decided, well, let's build it around MX switches, some Cherry MX. And that way, when people build it, because I'll just sell the PCBs, uh, you can put it whatever you want for your switches. I've got blues, so they're a little clicky uh, that we're going to be working with today. And let's see what happens when we build this thing. I did the first design for this PCB quite some time ago, and I put time into trying to find latching MX switches, which apparently used to be a thing, but aren't a thing anymore. So then I had to go back and redesign it to use flip-flops. So every time you hit one of the latching buttons, it will either turn it on or turn it off. And as such, I've added LEDs to those buttons to show what their current state is. I bought a box full of blue MX switches. The seller on AliExpress threw in a bunch of other types of switches for me to look at in case those didn't work for me. I 3D printed a plate for putting the switches in and, you know, supporting this, but I made it a little too thick. It's about three and a half millimeters. I think it needs to be about two millimeters and my 3D printer is out of commission right now, so I won't be making a new one of these. I'm just going to solder them in and hope everything works. I have a couple more of these plates. If it works, I can make another one. I also designed a set of DB25 to jumper wire adapter boards. These may not be used in the final piece, but for the moment, it will help me with troubleshooting if I need it. And now you get a soldering montage. I thought I'd be able to tape them to the board and flip it over and then solder a whole bunch at once, but that didn't go so well for me. Much, much, much later. So these should be 74 LS 74 dual flip flops. I don't have any on hand. For some reason, I only seem to have 74 HC 74s, but I'm going to put them in anyway and just see what happens. My cat thought he could be helpful in wiring. He is absolutely wrong, but you know. He wants to help, so. Uh. 
Okay, my 120 is fine, it boots right up. Let's see what happens when I plug in my keyboard. And it goes that way. Or electronically, it should be completely identical except for. Okay. Just. As I pull it out, you get a, a weird error. Where's my... Beauty, ground, not getting ground to ground. So I've got a pinout error somewhere. A little longer than a few minutes later. So the way I came up with this PCB was I took the C128 keyboard matrix and I recreated it in KiCad. Like, exactly. Like, I lined up things the same way. I labeled them the same way. I wanted to make sure that I got this exactly right. Now, the big difference is I can't get latching uh, MX switches. So I replaced them with 74LS74s, although I have 74HC74s on the board right now, and that could be part of the problem. Uh, I'm just going to take the chips out when I go back to test it. But you know, if you come in here... That's it. I've got this set up separately so that I have my latches. But otherwise, the rest of this is set up. Now, my understanding is two being keys like the unused pin on the Commodore 64. I could be dead wrong about that. But it doesn't connect to anything in this matrix, so I'm not sure where it would go. And 4 doesn't connect to anything, but I'm pretty sure that's just plus 5 volts. Um, and there's nothing on the keyboard that needs plus 5 volts normally, but it's glad, I'm glad they brought it up there. Uh, and when I tested my, my connection, I got plus 5 volts, like 4.98 volts. And 1 should be ground. So I'm an idiot. The uh, adapter I made to go from the DB25 to the jumper wires is... Um, I designed it in GeekAd to have both of them on the same side and they need to be... one needs to be inverted from the other. Which is why nothing is lining up right. Now luckily I did all this with jumper cables, so... It's just a matter of reorganizing the jumper cables to be in the right spot, but I do need to fix that. Yeah. So, just a matter of reconnecting it basically backwards. All right, I've got the 128 back up. This takes the retro tink a second. It's working. I still have a blinking cursor. I don't think I've destroyed anything. Let's put our updated keyboard into here. That pin is bent. I don't know how long that pin's been bent. I might have just done that. It might have been like that since I bought it. I never really paid attention.
I'm gonna guess I have to go to 74 LS logic. I just didn't have any LS uh, flip flops on hand. But I will, I guess, order some of them. Right, the other part of this, I need to test the fit. So I'm really bad at measuring for all the holes. There. 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 And there. So obviously I've got to go back to the schematic and redesign that to fit. But now I have a better idea where the holes are. Um, this was too thick for mounting. I just ran it through my 3D printer. So I will update this. This needs to be... Two millimeter for the capacitor there and then I want to put two pressure clips and again they'll line up with this board I'll be able to export this and re-import it and mark where I want to put the pressure holes go back and forth so I want two, two pressure clips that kind of clip in so that when you put this in all the switches stay aligned all right, so to wrap this up, uh, not a total bust, but a lot of lessons learned from the MX keyboard test. Um, I've marked on here where the new holes need to go, except that I've already, oh no, they're on the back. Okay, it's like I already wiped them off. No, uh, on the back, I've already marked where the new holes need to be. And so that'll require a PCB redesign. Along with that, my um, board to go in here needs to be thinner. I think I made this three mil. I need three millimeter. I need to make it two millimeter uh, and taper these keyholes just slightly. All possible, all easy to do in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, and then I'm going to put some pressure clips in to have this clip into the board so that it goes in first and then we'll just solder it right around it. That's just going to take uh, a little bit of forethought so that I have those all lined up when I make the PCB. Uh, should be pretty straightforward though. Otherwise, no damage to the C128. I'm very happy. Uh, I put it back together, tested it out. It seems to be working fine though. I am going to rebuild that power supply for it because remember I cut into it to do the 64C uh, and then I rebuilt the 64C's power supply, so I'm going to rebuild the 128's power supply. And I'll probably be doing that sooner than later. Um, other than that, uh, if you didn't know, I have an Etsy store where I sell the display stands that you've seen the computers behind me in my videos on. Uh, I've designed them all from scratch, and I'm working on some others. I recently got in a broken Super Nintendo to repair and an Atari 2600. I know these are outside my normal Commodore range, but I do enjoy these systems as well. And I'm designing the stands for them as well. So that will all be available in my Etsy store or uh, the merch section of realcheftom.com. Hint, they're just a little bit cheaper through my website because I don't have to pay the Etsy up fees. Feel free to go to realcheftom.com slash merch and you can pick up that. I've got t-shirts and all sorts of stuff as well. But more importantly, there's the stands if you like the display stands let me know. Um, one of the options is custom color. I will either email you or I think there's a place to put in the notes that what color you'd like. Uh, I'd keep black and gray in stock, but I can make any color as long as I can get the filament. Uh, is there anything else I need to worry about today? No, nope, that's it. Thank you. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, Go ahead and press that subscribe button in the center of the screen. 
I've also got a couple other videos I think you might enjoy.